our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. All right, man. We back. Goodfella Sports TV. Talk a little bit about a rumor that's going around. Is that Julian Williams could be firing Stephen Bredman after his loss to Jason Rosario. And he will, in fact, run it back with Jason Rosario next. But first, let's talk about Danny Garcia and Ivan Radcash numbers this past weekend. We back. Goodfella Sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Share the video. Appreciate the love and support everybody showing the channel. The best way to help is to share the share the video with other boxing fans and boxing media, right? So, uh, yeah, I did the averages in Danny Garcia according to the numbers that will pop up on your screen in a minute. They average around 370,000 viewership. Um, the main event peaked at 460-some thousand in viewership, as, as you see. And also, they have some swing cards on the bout as well that, you know, Kenny Porter said he was there till after midnight uh, working corner with uh, Barry Hunter with some of his fighters, but... Uh, here go the numbers, according to Jedi Goodman on uh, Twitter. He always got the numbers, him and Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Boxer, I think his name, Brooklyn Brawler. But uh, you see how it break down, 9-15, uh, just as the card started, uh, 300,000, 10-06, 356,000, 10-26, 417,000, 11 408,000. Uh, Danny Garcia main event, it peaked at 463,000, and after midnight, um, Eastern time, 275,000. So, they average roughly around 370,000 viewerships. That's what they did. The Danny Garcia show. That's what they did. Um, if you didn't know, the card was Stephen Fultman taking on another undefeated guy. Um, also, Jared Hurd taking on Francisco Santana. And uh, Danny Swift Garcia taking on Ivan Redcash. Now, Danny Garcia is supposed to fight Errol Spence next on pay-per-view is what I'm being told. Um, so I'm not sure when that's going to happen, May, April, June, July, or whatever date they may have. But Danny Garcia uh, just shows you the decline of Showtime's pay-per-view. Now, another big effect on the attendance as well, and I think they did over 8,000, almost 9,000 in attendance, according to Dan Rayfield. I'll link that in the uh, description if I, if I forget. Just hit me up in the comment section, email me, and I'll send you that article. They did almost 9,000 in attendance, but I think what really hurt Danny Garcia was the fact that LeBron James was playing in Philly that night. So I think a lot of people chose to stay in Philly and watch LeBron James basically break Kobe Bryant's record. That's before Kobe Bryant passed away. So I think Garcia attendance could have been a lot better. But Garcia, you know, like I said, they averaged 370,000. Um, that's not a bad number, but uh, for Showtime with us, it's pretty much terrible. Carisha, I think she did 300,000 uh, with uh, uh, Ivana Hasbick. And I also think uh, Brandon, excuse me, you know, Jamal Charlo, Dennis Hogan, they did 288,000. So Danny Garcia averages around 370,000. That's less than 500,000. That's less than a million. That's less than a 1.6 that Terrence Crawford did after the Heisman or whatever he did. That's less than a 1.6 that... Julian Williams did with Jason Rosario, obviously ESPN and Fox. ESPN is a basic cable channel. Fox is a free uh, TV channel, even though everything, nothing free anymore. You have to still buy a digital antenna. You used to put like a, a a Barbie pin in there, you know, you can get a signal. But they went to digital, shit, what was that, about 10 years ago now? So you still kind of got to pay to get the antenna. But uh, But yeah, to me, that's an okay number. But Danny Garcia, seeing this is Danny Garcia's show, was acting like he was going to do a million. And how can you tell me a guy who can't even get a million people to tune in uh, is a pay-per-view star is beyond me. You know, but Showtime is the G League of uh, PBC. You know, they used to, they kind of like what Bounce is. When they don't have a great, when it's not a great card, you know, and Fox don't want it, then they send it to Showtime. So that is what it is. Uh, around 370000 was the average for the card. Um, for Danny Garcia and the Danny Garcia show, that's a terrible number. But, hey, that is what it is. But let's talk about Julian J. Rock Williams and Stephen Bradman. It's a bit of rumors going around. I double-checked them. I have some people out of Philly tell me that uh, the rumor the rumor around the water cooler is that uh, Julian J. Rock Williams is not going to be working with Stephen Bradman. Stephen Bradman just appeared on, I think, was it Michael Wood podcast? And 
he basically said he'd be disappointed when they rematch or when it happens. If Julian doesn't knock out Jason Rosario, he got to knock him out. He said he can live with the Jamal Charlo loss because Charlo might end up going into the Hall of Fame. But he can't, you know, live with the Rosario loss and they got to get a knockout. But what's so funny about it is that uh, J-Rock was criticizing Jared Hurd for getting rid of his coach. Now, you know, you never throw a stone, you live in a glass house, right? And he cast that stone. But what he did know is that J-Rock, he gave the invitation for his trainer to stay on the team. The trainer, he declined to stay with J-Rock. So he left J-Rock and J-Rock didn't fire him. I mean, Jared Hurd didn't follow, fire him. But J-Rock and Stephen Bredman, they talk a lot of shit. They, they talk about being advocates for Vada. You know what I'm saying? They talk about, you know, who on top or who did, that we call in the shots now and this, that, and the third. This is this was deserved. This is, they had this coming. They deserved it. The way he was talking greasy to, to Jason Rosario, coach, and, you know, and you you don't take the punishment. The way they talked about Jared Hurd, the way they had hung Jared Hurd out there and said, you got this amount of time to, to do VADA testing, and now they got people thinking Jared Hurd is, uh, is on PDs when Jared Hurd just didn't know if he wanted to take the fight. You know, knowing what we know now, him and his coach K, they were still in the filling out period, and they decided not to take the fight. You know? And here they were on Twitter, instead of DMing them, instead of texting them, or going through Allen, going through the chains of command, they was out here, basically, they was out here, uh, you know, convicting Jared Hurd to being a PED user. You know, so this this deserved to happen, him getting knocked out. This is what happened when the nerd get power. This is what happened when the lame get power. You know, they be out here tap dancing and raccooning and they be sitting here saying how good Golovkin is or how good Canelo is, this, that, and the third. And, you know, oh, this guy's this and Pacquiao is great, this and that. And everybody know that Canelo failed the drug test. Everybody know that Manny Pacquiao ain't doing natural, you know, allegedly. You know, here they are, you know, or here Stephen Bremen is. You know, praising the other. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, if J-Rock fire him, he's going to be a, a hypocrite for how he blasted Jared Hurd. I don't think he's going to knock out Jason Rosario. Can he beat Jason Rosario? Yeah, they said that he had a cold or he had some type of illness going on. They didn't want to make no excuses, you know. But at the end of the day, you know, he was a champion for a day. And um, one thing about switching coaches is it's not like switching the coat. You know what I'm saying? You go through different practices, all right? You go through different trading methods. It's hard to get a, a new coach in, in a, a 10 or 12 week or shit, six month or a year training camp, you can make some serious changes. Just because you get a new coach don't mean you're going to fight better. It takes time to build that rapport, to build that dialogue in the corner, to hear that voice in the ring over all them voices. So, you know, it's, it's, his, it's, his, it's his funeral. You know, regardless, Stephen Bradman. You know, the bread man and gingerbread man, he probably going to lose again. You know, but I I never understood this. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. For your biggest fight of your career, you train in California in a crack motel. Let him tell it. You need to keep doing that. Keep that same hunger. I was watching an old interview with Mr. T and the reporter said, why you got them busted shoes on? He said, well, to you, it might seem like some busted shoes, but these shoes Never, you know, these shoes remind me where I come from and the struggle I came from. I'm paraphrasing. And J-Rock trained in Philly for a hometown Philly fight while it's cold outside. What you expect going to happen? You're going to get sick. No matter how much you bundle up, it's a good chance when you get older, when you get close to your 30s, that your immune system is not that strong no more. So if you're sweating in the gym, you run to the car, if you take a shower, even if you wait in the gym for your pores to close and your gym is hot or it's a lot of work going on in the gym, your pores not going to close. You know, that's why I never understood why people train in cold air in cold areas and why he trained at home for a hometown fight. That's too many distractions. He too comfortable. You need to put a fighter in an uncomfortable uh, 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 situation. That's what happened to Miguel Cotto. His uncle used to have him training in hot ass gyms and he didn't want to train like that no more. He got money. He fired his uncle. And he was never the same fighter, even with Freddie Roach. That was one of the reasons he ended up losing to, uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao to begin with. The uncomfort, the, un the uncomfort zone is great for fighters. That's what make you mean. That's what make you hard. And when fighters get money, you know, they want to be comfortable. They want to train lavish. And then that hunger is gone. 
But hey, it's my personal opinion on that. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you have a business question, inquiry, response, or video request. Keep sharing the videos. Let me know what you think about the Danny Garcia numbers. Let me know what you think about J-Rock possibly firing Stephen Bradman. It's just a rumor one time for the one time. Good fella sports TV. We gone.